Okay, so another little one, this is my fun bit, um, is putting the pictures in. So I know we, you know, and I'm, I'm not, hopefully not teaching you how to suck eggs, but I just thought it might be useful to just give some handy tips for yourselves. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. So this particular um, icon, they're very useful because they're actually saying to you, instead of pressing a lot of all these buttons, is actually everything is here. So we will use this momentarily. But for argument's sake, for this one, I've said I want to put in a picture of dentine tubules. So fine, you all know to go to Dr. Google and go through your thing and say, okay, dentine. Wonderful. And then you go into images. So you could do a number of things. So let's for argument's sake, say I want this image. I quite like this image. Pixelation's quite good. It's not blurry. And I'm going to right click that um, on that picture and say save image as. I would always avoid using copy image because it's very, very big. And what that means is, is it will take load, ages to load your presentation in the long run. Um, but also it's just it's unstable. So if it's too big, you just won't be able to do anything with it. So always save it. Now, what that means is, is that you will end up having a situation where you don't want your picture files to get your picture folder to get big. So you can see in my life the photos there. Um, so I always put my um, label my pictures as one because these are all accessible on the internet. I don't feel the need to store it. So any dental pictures I have, I always just override them and store them as picture number one. You can call it Bob if you want. It's up to you. You obviously know I have a natural love for Bob. So in this instance, instead of coming here and pressing insert and then going to pictures, you can actually use the functionality here. See here, it says there's a little picture and it's from my computer, which is what that little screen is. So you just press that and it will open, automatically open up your picture folder. And there you will see always at the beginning is number one. Number one, I'm just gonna double click that. And then it fits naturally into the text box of that size. So I quite like it. If you wanted to change the size of it, um, I would always go through the corner. Don't go down and then left and then right because that will the dimensions will change. If you want to change it, always go from the bottom corner so it's proportionally adjusted. So there's one picture. Um, you when you're doing it depends how finicky you are with your PowerPoints. Is always pick one way to do your PowerPoint pictures. So if you want to have it borderless like this, now I don't like sharp corners generally, it's a bit, it irks me a little bit. So I always go for rounded corners, but if you're going to go for that, always keep with that style throughout your presentation. And the way you do that is automatically, when you touch, click on your picture, you'll get this picture format come up and then you click this little button down below and you can pick everything you can pick that if you want but it's very noisy so I just want to go like that and just have curved edges very simple for me simple, simple mind so that's getting it off Dr Google and then what if you want to get it off a PowerPoint um, not a PowerPoint your for argument's sake your um, a PDF because we know that some papers have got PDFs um, some pictures in PDFs are really handy or you can't get hold of the good picture online. So this is a PDF document and what you do is, is you press um, print screen, which is actually on your keypad, on your keyboard. And on the usually on the top right corner somewhere, it says print screen and you press print screen. And that will copy the picture of your screen. And then you come into your box here and press right click and then you'll see picture based. And what that done is, is that has now taken a screenshot, but you can see your picture on the right hand side. So you will want to crop that and do a bit of cropping away. And there you go. There's the picture that you wanted, but of course you can crop it a bit further. 
Now, this is the, the interesting thing to show is that if you look here, you can see that actually in the background of this image is the original screenshot picture. You can see the, the double shot screen. Can you see the shadow in the background? That means that actually when you save this document, that whole image is going to be saved in the background, which makes your, your presentation absolutely huge. So you crop it down, but still in the background behind here is a um, is the big image. So I've got the image I want, but actually what I want to do is delete all the invisible stuff you can't see anymore. So if I go there, you can see in the background from where I cropped it, it's still there. So what I want to do is, is actually just select that and it's on the top here, you can see compress images and it will give you the option what compress means is get rid of all the extra bits you don't want and also just try and make that size of those pictures a bit smaller you've got the option of applying it to this picture only or all of the pictures in your presentation so you don't have to do this as you go you can do all of your pictures and then do it at the end so you can you'd only have to do it once so in this case, I'm going to say apply to this picture only. I'm going to unselect it. And you see here it says delete cropped areas of pictures. So it will delete the bits in the background. And in fact, I'll only do it for some because I haven't got any other pictures. And that's it. So now when I go to crop that again, you'll see there's no shadow. It's all that whole background image has disappeared. And so slowly, slowly, the size of my presentation will be a little bit smaller. Um, okay, hope that's useful.